Let's go one step further. We talked about the Taylor polynomial and how we can use it to approximate solutions to differential equations. This was the Taylor polynomial. If, however, I change this to the limit as n goes to infinity, I can think of this instead like this. And now it's a Taylor series. It is an infinite number of these Taylor polynomials added together. I am not going to talk about convergence, the ratio test. I just want to give us a little start to how you would solve differential equations using power series instead of just approximating with Taylor polynomials. And this is going to work for nonlinear situations as well as linear, but the example I'm going to use is linear. The first thing we always need to do is put our equation in standard form, that is the coefficient in front of the highest derivative has to be equal to 1. So let's look at this. If we have an equation in this form, what we need to do is find out what kind of points we have. Do we have ordinary points or singular points? What do I mean by that? Ordinary points are analytic at the point x0. What does analytic mean? It means the sum of the power series has a positive radius of convergence. It means that the, around the point there is an area to the left and to the right of it where the function, the power series, does converge. If it's not an ordinary point, it means it's a singular point. And when I said analytical at x0, what I specifically mean are that px and qx are analytical. So let's see a quick example. So let's look at p of x first. It certainly looks like if 1 minus x equals 0 or x is equal to 1, bad things happen. We're dividing by 0. So at x equals 0, this is a called a singular point. For this term, the qx, it might look like we're dividing by 0, but if you remember a little bit about limits, this actually does have a limit, or think of it this way. The power series for sine x can be written as this, x minus x to the third divided by 3 factorial plus x to the fifth divided by 5 factorial, etc. And if we're dividing that by x, so this is sine x, that's the power expansion of sine x, and then we have an x, you can see I can actually factor out that x, so it's removable. So it is not, in fact, a singular point. So you'll get some practice finding singular and ordinary points. Once you have determined your singular and ordinary points, you can go ahead and solve some problems. Okay, y double prime plus y equals zero. We know that everything is an ordinary point because there's nothing that involves dividing by zero, so all ordinary points. And we're looking at this at x naught equals zero. So this is a power series solution of y of x. So what we need to do is find those values of a n that make this equation work. If I wanted to take this solution and plug it into my differential equation, first I'm going to have to take my first derivative and then my second derivative. Notice I did change the indices on my series. All right, let's plug that into our differential equation, and let's try to make these indices on my summation the same. So for this first term, instead of n equals 2, I want to start at n equals 0, which means wherever I see an n, I need to add 2 to it to get to the 2. So that means Instead of n, I'm going to have n plus 2, because when n is equal to 0, 0 plus 2 is 2, which was my previous starting point. And then n minus 1 becomes n plus 1. The x to the n minus 2 becomes x to the n. And then I can combine these two and factor out my xn. Hopefully you caught the fact I accidentally left out my constant a sub n, which of course becomes a sub n plus 2. So if this is equal to 0, I don't want my x to the nth power to be 0, so what has to be equal to 0 is this. And I'm going to rewrite it like this. 
So now I have a relationship between an plus 2 and an with my n's thrown in. So what do I do? Well, you know what? I'm going to plug in some values for n and see what happens. If n is equal to 0, that means a2 is equal to negative a0 1 times 2. So again, all I'm doing is, and actually because I know where this is going, I'm going to reorder those. And then if I let n equal 1, I find that a3 is equal to negative a1 3 times 2. Okay, when it is, n is equal to 2, I get a sub 4 is equal to negative a2 divided by 4 times 3. But I know what a2 is. That's equal to negative a0 divided by 2 times 1. So I can change it to positive a0 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. When n is equal to 3, a5 is equal to negative a3 divided by 5 times 4. Again, I know what a3 is, and that's what it works out to be in terms of a1. And I could do this again for n equals 4 and n equals 5. All right, now what I need to do is come up with a relationship between a, all these a's, if I can group all the a zeros together and all the a ones together, I think I'm going to be able to come up with something. So let's first focus on my even numbers. It looks like four even numbers, and in case you don't know, you can force integers to be even numbers by multiplying any integer by two. So for even numbers, a of, well, we're going to call it sub 2k because we want to make sure it's even. It's equal to negative 1 to the 2k power times a0 divided by 2k factorial. If I have odd numbers, odd number of indices, this is 2k plus 1. So 2k plus 1, again, if I throw in any integer, multiply by 2 and add 1, I always get an odd number. This is negative 1 to the 2k plus 1 times a1 times 2k plus 1 factorial. So that means yk is equal to a0, the summation from n equals, uh, let's switch to k, so we're not mixing up our n's. So k equals 0 to infinity, negative 1, 2 to the k, x to the 2k divided by 2k factorial plus a1 summation from k equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 2k plus 1 x to the 2k plus 1 divided by 2k plus 1 factorial the and that is the solution to my differential equation um, the a1 and the a0, we would find that using the initial conditions. Now you might say, my goodness, um, I knew how to solve that in a much easier way. But again, for computers, for calculators, being able to do things numerically like this works quite well. And there are plenty of solutions that we couldn't solve with our regular methods. Again, this is just a quick look at what you can do with series solutions for differential equations. We first approximated them with Taylor polynomials, and now going to the series, you need to be a lot more careful with things converging, singular versus ordinary points, but this just gives you an idea that there's a lot more to solving differential equations than the analytical methods we've learned so far.